والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وآله الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه المنتجبين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته As we enter into the prayers, what is required of us is that inner calm and stillness. Ideally, we should not have any thoughts or emotions occupying us. However, that is next to an impossibility. So we don't force the thoughts to go out of our minds nor the emotions to be forced out of our chest. Rather, we become attentive to the fact that we are standing before God, the one who sees us in our physical constitution and the one who looks deep within us. Together with that, we understand that God has accepted us the way we are. And we have this mindset that he is allowing us to stand before him, not only as a favor and a grace of his, but because he finds us worthy to stand before him. And he wants us to stand before him. And he takes joy in seeing us appear before him. To focus the thoughts on these type of sentiments that I'm standing before God and he has been eagerly waiting for me to appear at this point and to give myself over to him. What that does is it creates that presence within us. Amidst all the thoughts and the emotions that are constantly occupying us, it creates some sense of presence. Now, when that presence is there, then we can start engaging with him. We start with Allah is the loftiest. And we expressed last week that loftiest means loftier than me. In other words, I'm giving myself to the presence of one who is not only grander than I am, who knows what is better for me than I do myself who cares for me more than I care for myself, who is more interested in my welfare and my success than I am of my own. With this sentiment, it becomes easier then to avail ourselves of the opportunity of coming in his presence. Then again, the thoughts need to be directed on the Fatiha that we commence with. It's a formality which prepares our inner being to allow it to embrace the presence of God in a more fuller manner. So we say, the ism Allah, with the name Allah. So here immediately the sense dawns upon us that Allah is Allah yet to be encountered. I commence through his name, Allah. And this name is a vehicle, a means for me to reach it. And there's a general inquisitive inquiry. Well, who is Allah that you dawn upon us at this point? This is followed by the two names, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. So we are reminding ourselves that we are in safe hands. We are in front of one who calls himself the eternally merciful in this world of ours and eternally kind in the next world towards which we are naturally advancing. So at this point, we arrive at utmost security that he is not a master in the way I have assumed him to be who needs my adoration and my worship and my discipline. No, he is beyond a kind parent. He is a genuine friend. He is concerned about me. And he is telling me, now you are in front of the one 
who is eternally merciful, eternally kind. There is no bound, there is no limit to the beauty that he is. Do not feel afraid. Do not feel shy. Do not be hidden from me. I have accepted you the way you are. I have known the way you are, and yet I have invited you to stand before me. I have already accepted you for what you are. Don't pretend in front of me. In fact, share with me. I am here for you more than you are there for yourself. You are interested in your own welfare, but you have come in front of the one who is more interested in your welfare than you are yourself. So don't shy away. Don't be hidden from me. Don't be pretentious in front of me. Let go of it all. Now he says, come a step closer to me. Empty yourself further. So we recite, Alhamd Lillah, praise be to Allah. And here the thought should be directed, I am praising him, which means I am acknowledging that whatever he has done in this world of mine and in my own life and in my own person is beautiful, is splendid, is perfect. And that's why I am singing his praise. But I do not find this world beautiful. I find in their turbulence. I am not satisfied. I am not happy. But in front of this grand, splendid, majestic authority, a friend and a parent, I am saying, I praise you. This praise cannot be artificial. It has to become a real act of praise. It cannot be begrudgingly done. It has to be done with inner contentment, fluidity, with inner acceptance, acknowledgement. This sends the mind thinking, I am praising my God. And in every instance, do I claim his praise? This is the commitment I'm making at this point. Maybe there is a different perspective from which I need to observe the world, my own life. Now think about this carefully. Rawan just prayed for our world. And the more we pray and neutralize the feelings of aggression, of confusion, the more the peace will dawn upon our world. If 8 billion people can acquire a state of calm, the war, the war will come to an end within the next hour. There will be no more poverty. There will be no more anguish. We are creating it. We are generating it. We are filling the air and the minds around us. And we are feeding off this negativity and aggression, confusion, distress, turmoil, turbulence. When we say Alhamd and we look at the world, we will see that there is a beauty that prevails, which is awakening us to our goal. The shame part of it is all. The shame part of it all is that we have had to create a pandemic, global crisis, a famine, war, human calamity and tragedy, we are through this process beginning to educate ourselves that no, we can do without it all. Our human sentiment wants peace. It wants harmonious coexistence. It needs calm to prevail within us. Our discriminatory attitudes have come to the fore during these crisis. So when we say Alhamd, we're saying, oh Allah, actually, this outer, this evil state is an expression of my inner state that is revealing itself on the human bodily stage. I praise you, for that is now 
awakening my inner being and saying to me that it is up to me to put it right. So praise be to you, O Lord, who allows the outer turmoil for me to see it's a reflection of my inner self. And praise be to you, O Lord, for me recognizing this. And praise be to you, O Lord, for bringing me to the fullness of my existence in this realization that I am the author of what is outside me and I can be the author of calming the situation beyond me by calming the inner being down first. Alhamdulillah. Praise belongs to Allah. Rabb al-Alameen. The nurturer of the worlds in their entirety. This is then supposed to prompt thought. As I said, there comes a time during the prayer where it's an angel that sings the praise of God, not a human who reflects upon what they are saying because the meanings are fluidly flowing through us and we become the praise and the act of praise. We become the world that is being nurtured by God. These words that we pronounce at this point, at a loftier stage, we become the words and the manifestations of those words. But for now, we are prompted into thinking, Rabb al-Alameen, the nurturer of the worlds. The nurturer is the mother. The nurturer is the father. The nurturer is the parent. The parent gives from their selves to bring the children to the fullness of their own self. A nurturer has to be possessed with the blindness of love, of care and compassion. And hence, what is to follow signifies the nature of the nurturer in the surah. But then think to ourselves, need I worry about my sustenance when he is my nurturer? Subhanallah. I have proclaimed you as my nurturer or God. You are not only nurturing me, but the hundreds of trillions of stars beyond me. The billions of cells within my body. You are nurturing the microscopic creatures that live and exist within the universe I call my body. O oh Lord, I am overly obsessed about my own self, but you nurture the bee and you have made my life contingent upon the bee. You nurture one and all from the smallest to the greatest. Let me free myself of the shackles of wanting to control my life beyond the sort of control I'm expected to exert within my human capacity. Let me leave the rest to you. Why ought I to lose my sleep when I've called you Rabb al Hussein so beautifully says, and I'm going to repeat this, I often do. He said, oh, the one who has looked after me so well in my yesterday, when I was unworthy of mention, did you not create me within the darkness of the womb of my mother? Did you not equip me with the fullest of the organs and the limbs that I needed to conduct a meaningful life upon the face of this earth? Did you not feed me when I was unable to understand what sustenance means and how to feed? Did you not make this body by itself, feed itself without me even awakening to this need? Or the one who has taken care of me so well in my yesterday and in my days gone, shall you abandon me if you awaken me to see another day? If you bring me to tomorrow, shall you leave my side in the tomorrow that is to come? But more than that, O oh Lord, you not only nurture my body, you nurture my mind. You not only nurture my mind, you nurture my spirit. You bring me to the fullness of my existence. You want to cause the light of that divinity of yours 
to shine most brilliantly through me. O oh, the nurturer of the body, I require your nurturing beyond the body, the nurturing of my soul in your image, in your etiquette, in your morals and in your virtues. O oh, the nurturer, allow me not to be preoccupied with the sustenance that I eat. Allow me instead to be preoccupied with you. Allow me to wait for the day when I breathe my last and you complete my journey to yourself. Immediately after that, the nurturer tells us, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. This is repeated again, that he is Rahman and he is Rahim. He does not intend evil for you. He does not intend bad for you. If you are unfortunate enough to fall in hell, it is not he who is putting you there. You have made your own way there. But even in the depths of that hell, his Rahmaniya is prevailing to bring you out once again. If only you could understand this. So he is then comforting us to say, look, you are before me. Understand who I am so that you become attentive to the one that you're standing in front of. I will not talk about the merits of this surah because it's an endless discussion. I just want to go through it. So in order to ignite our hearts in yearning him through what is being dictated through this wonderful prayer. In any case, I end here with this note that for him to repeat Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim shows that the way I am nurturing you I have not fallen short of kindness and mercy and love. If you do not see it, then look again. If you can't see it again, then look again. If you can't find it again, then trust in me. Eventually, eventually, I will nurture you to the level that you begin to see that everything that has happened to you has been caused by my mercy and eternal kindness for you. You have lost a dear one. Trust me, I'm nurturing you. If you are met with difficulty, trust me, I am nurturing you through my Rahmaniya and through my Rahimiya. If you have fallen ill, if you have lost your wealth, in all of these worldly conditions, I am taking care of you and I'm taking care of you in the best way that you can be taken care of. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.